Welcome to the Walton Pi. Today we're going to be talking about what it means for something to be a dihedral group. So if we start by looking at every positive integer n, where n is bigger than 2, then the set d2n is going to be the set of all symmetries of the n-gon. So when n is 1 or n is 2, there's not really a good representation for that in terms of shapes, but the groups are still going to exist. So the symmetry of an n-gon is any motion where you can pick up the polygon, move it however you want in three-dimensional space, and then put it back down. Okay, so, for example, the square. That's the foregone. So let's look at the symmetries of a square. So there are going to be eight symmetries of the square. We have all of these. Um, if one, two, three, four, if we look at it as we go around clockwise, the very first one, we can rotate it, we can flip it, we can flip it and rotate it. All of these are the symmetries of the square. And we can describe these transformations to go from one symmetry through another through a series of rotations and reflections. So for example, we can rotate 1, 2, 3, 4 to become 4, 1, 2, 3. We've rotated it once. Okay? A reflection would send 1, 2, 3, 4 to 1, 4, 2, 3. We just flip it across the diagonal from 1 to 3. So those are the different reflections and rotations that we have. Okay? So if we let R be a rotation and D be a reflection, then we have this. E, that's going to just be our natural starting point. That's the identity. It's not changing. But then we could rotate it once, or we could rotate it twice, or rotate it three times. But then if we rotate it four times, we're back to where we started. Because if we rotate 2, 3, 4, 1, that becomes 1, 2, 3, 4, which is our original starting point. But then we could also have a reflection. For example, we could have D, we could reflect it first, and so then we get 1, 4, 3, 2. But then we could also reflect it and then rotate it. So that's where we get this DR. We could reflect it and then rotate it twice, or we could reflect it and rotate it three times. But if we reflect it and rotate it four times, we're back to where we started at D. And so the question is, how can we rewrite this in a way so we don't have to like list out literally every single rotation? Because with a square, there's only eight. But if we look at like a pentagon, there's going to be 10. A hexagon, there's 12. It, it's really hard to write them all down, and how would we label all of them? So to represent the dihedral group D8, so the symmetries of the square, we can represent it through the two basic transformations. We have rotations and reflections. And so if we represent it through those two basic transformations, we can describe how do they re interact with each other. So we're going to let E be the identity, and then D8 is going to be this. So this is how we can write what a group is. So D8 is the, so here's how we would read this. We have D8 equals the set generated by R and D. So it's generated by rotations and reflections, and then we say how do those interact with each other. The vertical line means such that, so it's the group generated by R and D such that r to the fourth is equal to d squared is equal to e. It's equal to the identity. So r to the four and d squared, both of those cancel out to just be the identity. But then we also have dr is equal to r cubed d. So that tells us that if we do a reflection and then a rotation, that's the same thing as doing three rotations and then a reflection. So we can see that by looking at Here's E, here's R, here's D, here's R cubed, and here's DR. If we reflect R cubed, we end up with DR. So both of those are going to be the same in this case. So to represent the dihedral group D2N, we can represent it similarly to D8. So we let E be the identity, and then D2N is the group generated by R and D, where R to the N equals D squared equals E, and then DR is R inverse D. So what does this mean in terms of other groups? So the group D2, that's going to be the same as the cyclic group of order 2. D4, that's also known as the Klein 4 group, a fairly famous group. Um, and these are the only two abelian dihedral groups. All other abelian, all, sorry, all other dihedral groups are non-abelian groups. So why is D8 not abelian? We're going to look at DR and RD. So if we have E, R, and D, DR is 2, 1, 4, 3, but RD is 4, 3, 2, 1. Those are different 
groups or different uh, symmetries so they are not the same so the multiplication in this group does not uh, work so I hope this made sense and that you were able to understand dihedral groups a little bit better uh, if it was helpful please like and subscribe it really helps me to be able to keep making these videos and if there are other algebra topics that you would like me to uh, talk about please leave that in the comment section down below I hope you have a great rest of your day and good luck with all of your math